I've been working on the railroad. Um, not gonna lie, this is a little tricky. Um, I've been working on this arrangement for uh, several weeks now. Um, so it's definitely an advanced lesson. It's probably one of the most complicated uh, arrangements I've ever put together. So um, this one's for my son. He loves trains and uh, this little jingle gets stuck in my head all the time. So um, let's dive in to the lesson. This is in standard G tuning. This is the, it's not your typical old timey song where it's just major, major, minor thrown in there. Um, you know, there's a lot, there are a lot of sevens. Uh, there are some places in this where it's going to look like we're playing part of a different chord and we're actually, you know, the corresponding guitar or whatever, uh, chord, uh, is something entirely different. So, um, I got the tab pulled up here. I'm gonna get a little closer look. It took me a really long time to write this tab out. So if you're here for this lesson and learning this, I'm not gonna get into too nitty gritty detail. I'm sure you can figure out a lot uh, or just adapt on your own. But, you know, following tab, we're just, if you notice, if you've done my tabs and my lessons before, I do a lot of skip notes. So in parentheses in the tablature, you're gonna see you know, numbers uh, in parentheses, those are skip notes. So like, in, you know, instead of a th th drop thumb that's, I'm like, just syncopation, stuff like that. Feel free to, to do whatever you like otherwise. Um, if you see an X in parentheses, that means that I really didn't have like an implied note to put there. So there's just really nothing. The other thing you'll see is if you see a hammer on symbol, to a note or a number, like a fret number, and there's nothing before it, that's an alternate string hammer-on. So there are a few of those in here. So, and it's a slide with your thumb, two to five. Real quick, drop thumb down to two. And this is your first alternate hammer-on. You're gonna strike your open G, and you're gonna hammer-on your D, uh, on your third fret to give you the G7 to lead into the C. So, but you're not going to strike this at all. It's this is kind of like ghost that comes in just on the underside. Like if you strike it, it's too pronounced otherwise. So I, I just I do that as a hammer on. There's one other instance of that. Um, so and then this is just simple. Just again, if you pay attention to the skips I do. And then this is your second instance of that alternate string hammer on. Hit your B string, and you're gonna hammer on a third fret of your G. So it's like a, you know, I skip the drop thumb a lot. You don't wanna hit, this one's too discorded. Sounds like a fun house or something. Or, sorry. Um, I don't know, I just put that in there. Just, I think I made a mistake early when I was writing this and thought it sounded neat, so I kept it. Um, so, so far we have. See a break in the tab, that's where we are now. That's a real quick turnaround. It's easy, just um, real quick again, drop thumb, slide onto your open B, and then another quick slide to give you this. A lot of these notes hang, so I had to come up with real busy stuff to sort of. You know, I'm hitting this note, and then I'm just immediately sliding into it again, so... Um, uh, this is just two, or I think, yeah. So, you're gonna do... I think I have a drop something in there, I'm sorry. So 
that part, if you read, like, uh, you know, I, I looked up a couple of versions of this to try to come up with this version. Uh, I found a lot in C, and I found a lot in, in G. Uh, well, a few in G. I actually, the G one just, you know, suited the banjo. So a lot of the versions that I found had an A7 here. So, if, you know, um, working on railroad just to pass the time. I guess it would be like, pass the time. Right now. Pass the time away. Well, for whatever reason, you have to hit um, an A note and then an open B note in the, for the melody. So it was like really almost impossible to, to, to come up with an A7 position uh, because you need to have your open G and you also have to fret um, your, your uh, uh, C sharp here. Yeah, B, C sharp. Um, so it didn't really work. So I just kind of have it hanging open. So... Let me uh, start that part from the beginning. Ah, whoops. Now you're gonna do a D. So I'm just using open, three, and two. I think the way that my fingers land sometimes, it goes. So we're going to roll into a D7, a full D7 chord, where you have, you know, fourth fret, second fret, first fret, open. So then it goes. So that's skip, and then a drop thumb with skips. And then you're doing that hammer on. But you have to be careful because the D is in the melody, and then the next note, the next strike, I dropped out of the G and hit that, so, whistle blowing, and then, all the something, oh yeah, so then, this is the drop thumb on the C like before, so, but now what you're going to do, let me scroll my tab up here, so I'm just teaching it the, the way I wrote it. This is the only instance of a B chord in this entire progression, and it threw me off at first. Um, so, you're... Or, you're gonna slide up. I just, usually your fingers are already here, and I just... So a true B would be like... But since your fingers are already in this position, and or this position because you're going to drop for the melody and you slide up. I'm just leaving the open B string open and then I'm just bringing, you don't even really need to bring this finger in. I don't think I even play the full chord, but I just do it for completionist's sake. So. Or how's it been? So it's like a little drop thumb I do. You can do whatever you like there. Uh, sorry, I don't have my glasses on. Um, I, I, the reason I take them off and on sometimes is because the, the light reflects in them for the video. So, And then you're going to go back to the C. There's this quick little lick. It's really cool. It's like a drop thumb, a strike, and another drop thumb real quick. So it's from the C. So... I think I have, I sometimes do a drop them. I think I wrote it in there like that, so. So, let me do that quick turnaround again. I'll do it slower. That's it. So, um, it's, it is tricky. Um, I, I haven't completely filled out the tab yet, but I'll put the corresponding chords above it so you can kind of follow because 
even looking at the tab, even having it written, I'm like, my gosh, this is all over the place. So again, tabs, lessons, all that completely free. Always, uh, you know, there's a tip jar. Should you feel so inclined keep all these instruments strung up here? Um, I have taken a couple of days off from putting out lessons at my anniversary and my birthday and we traveled and uh, might end up being the same this week's my wife's birthday this weekend. So um, real quick, going to go over this a little slower. I am going to put my glasses on this time because getting older and uh, you know how that fun stuff goes. <laughs> trying to come up with a beginner's version of this. I honestly am about ready to be done with this song. I've got it in my head. I was going to come up with this arrangement and uh, I have just been picking at it for uh, too long. So I uh, hope you enjoy it. Give me uh, any feedback on the lessons, the tabs, anything. I always want to make them better. Like I said, they're free. I just want them to be better. I want them to uh, be available. I want them to be understandable. Um, I just, I try to write them the way that I play it and I, you know, everybody develops their own style over time. I've been playing a long time. So I don't do a lot of standard bum ditties. I do a lot of skips, stuff like that. So what you're seeing is how I play it. You will, you know, see it, see it fit. You'll see the bare bones in there if you look at it. And then make it your own. So thanks again for watching.